Hello and welcome to the podcast. We have as a returning guest, Mr. Rod Steele, which you've seen on our show a few times before, and he's making another vaunted uh, return once again. Uh, if you are new to the program, please do like, subscribe, and share as it helps the channel grow. Rod Steele, welcome to the podcast. How are you and what have you been up to? Hey, John. Well, I'm, uh, my voice is a little croaky today. As you know, I'm, I'm working remote and have been for months due to my medical condition and so I had to go mow my regular house yard yesterday, and it had grown up, and it was it was bad. It took me like three and a half hours, and now I have a very congested head and throat, mm. but I am going to give it the old college try and do the best I can for you. <laughs> well, we appreciate, we appreciate your stalwart efforts. So uh, jumping right into the situation at hand with the rack, they're in an interesting place, as you well know. I know you've got all of your information queued up as, as normal. But just to start you with some preliminary questions, uh, it seems like they are ascending into the WTO. Uh, Russia is making a concerted effort to bring them you know, into the BRICS, provided that they are either currency or the gold-backed asset. So it seems like we're in an interesting place at this moment in time with things happening in the world and particularly uh, with Iraq. What, what can you tell us about that from your end? Well, I, I think you're spot on as always. And uh, I, I've listened to your shows that I'm not on, and I'm just like so impressed. <laughs> John really has it together, and and you're exactly right. Um, they it, this this is going to happen in spite of the United States, folks. That that's what this comes down to. <laughs> you know? No, that's that's exactly right. Because the U.S. hates competition, and I think they're going to be pretty upset when it does happen. And uh, one of the things I was hearing, Rod, since you brought that up, I, what, I was going to ask you this later, but you kind of segue nicely into it is uh, we've been talking about, if you've seen on our, our Telegram channel, the possibility of once this happens and the U.S. is upset about it, the, specifically the deep state, of course, uh, is that they may try to put sanctions on the banks for one to three weeks. Have you heard about this and any specific banks that you think might be targeted in that process? No, I haven't. I mean, I I know who the top five tier one banks are that involved in the RV. You know, that's Chase. They've got the lead contract now after Wells Fargo lost it from creating phony um, accounts for members and, and the audit caught it and they, their punishment was to lose the lead contract. Uh, Chase has now taken that over and run away with it. They've got like 10 locations set up for Iraq as far as banks. Over there, they've got a 30-story high-rise planned in Baghdad. Um, you've also got Citibank, Bank of America. And is it Fifth Third? I always forget who the fifth one is. <laughs> uh, I believe it would be uh, City, HSBC, I think, maybe. Hey, maybe, yeah. HSBC actually is, of course, that's Chinese-owned and, and mm -hmm. like 30% of Wells Fargo. And the point of buying that was so that they could keep an eye on them for this RV. And even that wasn't enough to keep them from screwing things up. Mm -hmm. But um, nonetheless, if, if there are any, I guess that's, that's, they could make that attempt. I think it's mostly saber rattlings at this point. Um, this, this is a done deal. They've done everything they can to stick their toe in and stop the door from closing, um, right up to this weekend for that matter. But, um, and it's always something, you know, it, they, it never seems to surprise me what new things that we can come up with to stop this. Uh, of course, it's never our fault. We always have someone to blame it on. But you can always dig deeper and see who was really behind it. And so if you if you track the money, that'll eventually get you to where the who's responsible. Um, but I, I don't honestly see that. And plus, your money is going to be in the QFS anyway. So mm -hmm. basically going to be able to operate it off of your cell phone from your recliner. Yeah, I, I wasn't saying this was going to be with any permanency. I think it may be one to two weeks. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of scammers, you know, that try to come out of the woodwork and try to circumvent and say, hey, we'll do it for you. And, you know, backdoor deals and 800 numbers and all that stuff. And and that's a trap largely, we believe. I think if people just stand pat and wait for that time when Sudani comes and announces that the sanctions have been removed, should it come to that? And I think, like you said, with the banks, it'll be smooth sailing. And and, it, and it's not just on the big end. They're they're looking out for everybody. They're, they're coming after. I'm sure you've had your share. Uh, ever since I've started these uh, private consultations, people have told me, they said, hey, did you know that, you know, you're, there's somebody that looks like you, smells like you, and talks like you. Anyway, they're using all of your stuff mm -hmm. on Tumblr, they're using it on, on uh, Telegram, 
And then today, God bless her, uh, I had a little woman uh, said, I, I sent you funds for the consult. And she said, would you mind checking? Well, it's the first one I've ever checked and there wasn't anything there. Mm -hmm. And she said, I sent it to, and she gave them the address and she put in one wrong digit. And mm -hmm. matter of fact, the only difference in the digit was mine was an eight and hers was a six. So it looked a lot like uh -huh. the eight. Anyway, it was somebody cloning my account to try to bleed people off for their own benefit. And in her case, it worked. And so we're working with, you know, Cash App to try to get that reversed. But it was clearly a cloned account to get other people's money that didn't know any better. Yeah, sad, sad, but true. Unfortunately, we see that on, on some Rumble channels as well. People do and YouTube, I'm sure as well. So, um, OK, so what what's kind of the meat of what you have to share today in terms of whatever intel you might might have forthcoming? <laughs> Well, it's, it's been a minute since we were together, so I, I always like to kind of do a, a, a rewind and bring us up to speed. Uh, you know, the, the framework uh, of Iraq, that's basically the deep state of America as equivalent. In other words, they're, they're the Iranian-influenced uh, segment of Iraq. Uh, they want the U.S. out. Uh, Kurdistan wants us there to protect them. Uh, the U.S. is talking about changing the name of our peacekeeping military. Um, we shot down six of their Iranian militia drones uh, a week ago. Coalition forces told Baghdad that they wanted the U.S. to stay. Um, and they're still publicly talking about changing the rate in the in the newspapers in, in uh, Iraq. The banks, the feds are all still waiting. IMF and UN uh, have had meetings with a high probability of, of this going well. <laughs> everybody's telling me now um, we're, we've reached a critical point at this point globally and, and financially. Um, it has to happen now or there's going to be a major implosion. And everybody knows it. Um, and yet somebody way up high is has still been preventing this. And, and they're like, you, you've got Everybody that's anybody is now coming after it and saying, look, this has to be done immediately. And so um, I know there's some contention out there as to how real that is, but that doesn't mean we were supposed to have had it over the weekend. It's supposed to have begun Friday night. Um, I'll go into that more later. But anyway, <laughs> It's just irritating. I, I was on conference calls for like three hours today, and I, I heard stuff that would make your toes curl. Um, everything has been done that needs to be done to make this work. Um, Kurdistan just switched over all to dinar. They've got no more dollars. Um, they don't want the U.S. to leave. As I said, the Iraqi parliament is uh, walking the fence politically. Uh, they're not, they, we're not leaving over there, folks. We've got too many vested interests. It's not going to happen. Um, U.S. says to Iran, stop your militia from uh, bombing U.S. bases and we'll stop bombing you. Um, the Treasury is saying that it's a go. The Federal Reserve is saying it's a go. The IMF has resolved everything. Uh, we did have a problem uh, with the World Bank, not, not with the World Bank, but with the United States association with the World Bank. Um, and the thing was, we just basically didn't want to ante up like all the other countries had. We didn't feel like we needed to because we were the big boy on the block. And basically they said, hey, um, that's fine. You know, we'll just RV without you and you'll be left in your fiat system to, to rot and the rest of the world will move on. And so Tuesday a week ago, uh, the U.S. decides, okay, we'll we'll ante up, and then on Wednesday it got implemented. There was still something on Friday that hadn't been completely ironed out. That was supposedly taken care of over the weekend, and um, and that was last weekend, not this weekend. And so, um, we're I'm still trying to get the detail on why this hasn't gone yet. Um, we know that. Uh, the Fed, the IMF, said that everything was resolved. They agreed that we would. They're they're talking about by the end of the month. Uh, we're we're fastly approaching the end of the month, folks. It's this week. Announcing how uh, Iraq's announcing how crooked the CBI is uh, with its crooked politicians, 
the options uh, will be cut off in the near future after the new rate is, is brought out. Um, the foreign currency exchanges will have to be done between the Iraqi banks uh, with their own ability to handle it now. Um, we've got new changes coming 1st of March, and we've still got live rates uh, waiting for authorization uh, at the bank. Um, we, had, we thought it was going to go this last weekend. Um, we've got oil in a good place over there, $81, $82. Uh, everybody's just waiting for the authorization. The banks are ready. The rates are ready. Um, the three zero dinar notes uh, will not uh, be taken off in the U.S. Some people are concerned about that. That's not going to happen. Uh, regarding the WTO, uh, there was a nice long article on it today. If you wanted to take the time to read it, I could go through it with you. But basically, uh, they were having uh, meetings throughout the, this past weekend, and Iraq needs a new international rate in order for that relationship to work. Um, they have everything. They have to have everything done and into the dead, and into the World Trade Organization by Saturday the 24th, which I believe they did. Uh, Iraq will be present on was on Sunday. Um, there were they did do presentation there. Um, Iran and the private banks in Iraq are still don't want this to happen. Um, the Iranian infiltration of militia in government uh, is is a definitely an issue. Articles are still saying that the RV is imminent and will be with um, more and will be worth more than the United States dollar. Um, Iraq uh, participated in the WTO meetings for the first time uh, in 20 years. Uh, this past weekend, they have uh, completed what Iraq needed to do to ascend into the WTO. Uh, still looking by Thursday the 29th, and we need a new rate for changes to take place um, that start as early as March 1st. Uh, Sadani is in D.C. now asking us to stay till they get rid of the Iranian influence. Um, one of the five banks, uh, top five banks, was holding us up uh, this weekend. But that did get found out this morning. Um, agreements were then made. Uh, a militia is still misbehaving, and we retaliated with 18 bombings. So I, I think they got the message. Um, and that is pretty much where we are. Um, I, the world is is upset as putting it mildly compared to what I was told today. Um, they're they're making very strong demands that we we get this done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you for that, Rod. Let's back up a second because you you shared a lot of information there. It's interesting you mentioned uh, J.P. Morgan as the lead bank because. Uh, as you probably know, a story came out a couple of days ago that uh, Jamie Dimon sold 150 billion worth of shares on the open market, which is unprecedented. So that's kind of interesting that uh, that would happen on the backs of all of this news circulating. Um, do you also think, Rod, that uh, Sudani and and uh, I think I think it's Barzani is are going to? I think he's already there in D.C., like you said. Do you think in part they're going to let them know about the reforms that they intend to bring back and dealing with the Persh murder forces as well? Well, it's it's all part of the the whole thing. I mean, it's at this point, in my opinion, the whole thing is theater. Um, there there may be some details that are still being finalized, but uh, this was decided months ago. Um, the the plan was decided years ago. Um, so at this point, it's it's it, it's honestly, I I try to be professional, but it's kind of a pissing contest at this point. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as as the bank shares being sold, um, and not only bank shares, I mean, my goodness, uh, the uh, who was it? Bezos sold off. Bezos. Uh, how much of Amazon? <laughs> oh, billions. I know Elon Musk sold off some as well. Yeah, and so they all know what's coming. They yeah. they didn't get where they are by not being informed, and so mm -hmm. I actually um, had a meeting with some QFS people that basically said, look said all the banks are going to crash and you can't pick and choose. They said they're all going down. But right. they said the, we are mirroring their accounts in the QFS. So even though the banks will lose, the people that have their accounts in those banks will be safe and secure. So I'm, I'm banking, so to speak, 
on that being correct. <laughs> from, your, from your lips to God's ears, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, it's interesting. We've been, you, you know, you talked about, and we've talked about in subsequent, or I should say previous conversations about uh, the aspect of, you know, the delays and why is it not happening? And, and, you know, there's, there's lots of reasons for that. Right. But one of the theories my team has, and I was curious to get your take on for your followers is we believe they're delaying the budget for April because that's the beginning of the new fiscal year that they do every year. And so just wondering if you had any sort of uh, cross information uh, on that. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Um, I, you know, the old, the old thing about the HCL thing getting to, again, I, I think every bit of it is decided. I think they're just stalling for the, for the, the deep state is, is trying to bleed us off as much as they can possibly siphon off before it happens because they know what's happening. And and the good guys are trying to make things safe for the rest of us uh, and, and pull out as much as we can. Um, and, and in reference to that, you know, people keep seeming to be concerned about the um, emergency alert system and, and the blackouts and all that stuff. I've been told in, in quite positively that you're not going to have a massive uh, blackout of, of resources. Um, it would be devastational to so many different industries, uh, especially our first care, uh, our first responders, and hospitals and so forth. You just can't have that. Uh, everything operates on on computer systems and, and communication nowadays. So the the intent is that they are are currently taking out uh, and planning to take out um, different social media systems within specific locations where they still want to complete some deep state cleanup. And that's primarily, sorry to say, in blue cities and states. Um, for instance, I was told that there's not one in Texas that is going to be involved. And so uh, congrats to all you gun toters. Anyway, <laughs> anyway um, Oh, there was something else that, and it ran through my head and it exited on the way out. And I, I forgot what it was. It had something, it's had something to do with what you were talking about though. <laughs> that's okay. We, we can, we can come back to it once you, once you think of it, that's totally fine. Um, another thought or, or another question I had for you, Rod, was we talked about this offline, but uh, Janine Planchert, who is the, for those who don't know, the UN foreign relations uh, director for Iraq or the liaison, kind of a go between of both sides. She has stated uh, privately and publicly that she's adamant she is ending her tenure in May. As far as we know, they don't have a successor for her position as it relates to Iraq. Uh, and she wanted on record her legacy that the uh, uh, dinar would RI under her watch, which, would, which, as I said, she's leaving in May. So it would appear that this has to happen by or before then. Um, what can you tell us, if anything, about that situation? Well, I, I think it says we're down to between now and April 1st. Uh, we, we've known that uh, both Kurdistan and Iraq's fiscal year uh, both begins uh, that same time. And mm -hmm. so, and there's been articles out by Sadani that publicly that uh, they would have a new rate going in by that time. So it, they're not trying to hide it. Uh, I think they're, somebody's delaying it, that's for sure. And uh, the people that are being delayed are not happy campers. And so I don't know that it's going to wait till April 1st. I hope it doesn't. Um, there's too many critical things going down between now and then. Uh, there's a lot of new things going to be brought online on March 1st. And so um, maybe that'll be our transition month. I, I know that they are a lot of people are demanding it be done this month. So it's only a period of about what, thirty-five days. <laughs> yeah, I'd say sixty on the outside, but yeah, I mean, it's just depending how you look at it. Yeah. So okay, so thank thank you. Um, <clears throat> so with all that, we don't, as you know, get a lot into dates and rates here, but more about events and puzzle pieces, right? But you said some important things within that dialogue you were sharing, <laughs> in regards to it's going to be on the QFS. So if it's going to be on the QFS, it's going to be on a digitally backed asset backed system, primarily. Not exclusively, but primarily gold. So, wouldn't wouldn't it would it be safe to say that that the average person could feel that it would bode pretty well in terms of, you know, what the potential rate could be once it begins and it 
kind of, you know, extenuates out over, say, a 90-day period once it goes live? Yeah, I mean, uh, they agreed at Davos what it was going to come out at, uh, supposedly, and that may be one of the little bit of a stalls because we're not there yet. And what, what mm -hmm. we're seeing on uh, the bank screens is a good dollar eighty less than than what Davos agreed it should be. They did say, however, that because we are within twenty five cents of where Kurdistan is, that we're within a parameter that it could go now because uh, they are within that that agreement that they've always had that uh, Baghdad or Iraq would be within twenty five cents of Kurdistan, and. Um, now you've got the Iranian leader saying we're going to be bigger than than Iraq. Everybody's positioning themselves. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But to answer your question, yes, it will undoubtedly climb um, the um, the economy. According to Sadani, could could withstand somewhere between fourteen and seventeen dollars. Um, I'm told that it won't stay there very long. That it will it will peak. And then drop back down somewhere in the middle. Okay, I'm glad you brought up. Th thank you, Rod. I'm glad you brought up Kurdistan because they're sort of an X factor in all this. You know, they really got, for lack of a better word, screwed out of the deal on the budget because they had position and their leader pretty much abdicated the throne, so to speak, and put them in a, a position where they're sort of groveling now for, you know, percentages. And they definitely don't want our military to leave because it's some of the only leverage they have to kind of get back in the game. So how, if anything, does, because, you know, Kurdistan represents one of the largest blocks over there. How, if anything, can they reestablish a foothold in this process as Iraq gets ready to emerge internationally? Well, they've got a lot of experience on the rest of the area because they've done so well for so long. Uh, I think they're highly respected by the Middle East. Um, they're certainly outperforming the rest of Iraq and have had since we suppressed their uh, economy. Uh, mm -hmm. Not to say that Iraq wouldn't have done better if we hadn't suppressed their economy. <laughs> and and there's other reasons besides oil that get a little more ethereal, a little more in outer space, so to speak, as to why we went over there. Uh, if you want to start getting off in the rabbit hole about portals and, and all that kind of thing. But um, anyway, I don't, I'm not concerned, and I don't think they are, that, that Kurdistan isn't going to take back their their rightful strength um it's it's just a matter of of time for for all of us but but especially so they're back on top again i don't i don't see an issue for them mm, great thank you uh last question for today rod because i know your time is is precious uh it's also my understanding that uh, china and russia specifically putin are pushing for uh, both countries as you know with memorandums to for iraq to reinstate and, and putin is been very heavily courting uh, Iraq to join the BRICS uh, here pretty shortly, which obviously their big brother Iran is, I believe, already done. And so in, in, a, in an effort to sort of untentacle Iraq and Iran from each other and also to uh, bring them onto and safe passage in the BRICS. But one of, the under, one of my understandings to do that and achieve that would be that uh, Iraq has to come back on a reinstated international rate, on a, a primarily gold asset backed uh, rate. Uh, when do you see, if, if you're able to tell, uh, when that might happen, that Iraq would come uh, join the BRICS? Wow, yeah. Um, poor, you know, God bless them. They're being torn in every different direction. You've got China over there in full force, uh, building streets, bridges, hospitals, and schools with Chinese people, and they're all speaking Mandarin. And if you want to deal with them, you can do it their way because it's their money and they don't care. Uh, you got the U.S. with their petrodollar that's been in control forever, and we're hoarding 35, what is it, billion of uh, I think it's Iraqi. 35 plus billion, yeah. Yeah, in, in reserve, and basically hold that over their head and say, if you don't do what we tell you to do, we're not going to release your money. And then you've got Putin over there trying to bring them on to, to BRICS, which I think is fine, personally. Um, the, you know, BRICS, and I Dare I say I like Putin? Uh, so, you know, anyway, um, I, I mean, if you listen to his interview with, with Tucker Carlson versus who's sitting in charge of our country, <laughs> you know, I mean, the knowledge of history of his own of his own country and our country is just phenomenal. 
uh, I have tremendous respect for him. And and it, I could go into the detail between what um, Trump, Xi, Putin, and I always forget the leader of India. Modi. Uh, Modi, thank you. They they were all met back when Trump was still in office and had a meeting and they said, how are we going to bring this about? And they drew straws and Putin said, OK, I'll be the bad guy. You know, I'll, I'll like invade a, Ukraine in order to clean up the deep state over there, which is like the buckle of all money laundering. And um, so there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than what's alluded to. And BRICS was just... Um, you say I, you thought I forgot the question. I didn't. <laughs> you know, BRICS was was Plan B to the RV. If like RV was going to be the answer, and then BRICS was going to be the backup if somebody got dirty and decided not to do Plan A, and that's exactly what happened. And now Plan B is forcing Plan A to happen, and that was the entire plan from the beginning. It's like this is BRICS is our backup plan. If we can't get the RV to go like we want it to, then we'll bring in bricks and we'll bring in everybody through the back door that way. And so that it, by him bringing a, a rock in, it's just one more chess piece uh, to force force the event. Makes sense. Well, thanks, Rod Steele, for your time. As always, we appreciate it. We look forward to having you on again next month. Um, where can people find out about you and any last thoughts that you have for our audience today? Well, that's very kind. I always enjoyed my time with you, John. Uh, I, I keep a low profile, as I was told by the men in black. Uh, over on uh, X, you can see me at Patriot Rod Steele. It's S-T-E-E-L with no E on the end. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about how you could uh, benefit yourself uh, at the redemption appointment at the Banking Alternative Centers, or whatever you want to call it. The banks, I don't care. Anyway, it, it's a you're going to meet with a banker to exchange your money, okay? So, <laughs> you know, but I, I go into very much detail as to um, the, the rates that not only you will be provided, but the rates that you could ask for and why that is specifically available, as well as additional uh, rates that you could achieve if you knew what to ask for and why. Um, the, a good explanation of what people have experienced to escape art in front of you and exactly what went on in that meeting uh, and how to be prepared with the best uh, questions and statements on your part, um, con concerns that the bank had for you to look out for in order to be in the best position for yourself and your family, um, and other opportunities as far as within the bank itself after you have these funds in place. Um, and so there's just a tremendous amount of topics we cover in about a 40 minute period. And it has significantly increased the options of those who have taken advantage of it. And if you would like to do so, please DM me uh, at the Rod Steele, Patriot Rod Steele um, site on X. And if you're not familiar with DMing, because I do have people say, well, well, how do I do that? There's a little envelope at the top of the header and just click on the envelope and that'll take you into the DMs and then you can say anything you want to say, preferably not too long. But uh, if you let me know that that's your interest, I will um, immediately send you, it won't be immediate, I'll be two or three days. I'll send you the information and then you can proceed at your choice from there. Sounds good. Thanks, Rod Steele, for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for being on the podcast. We look forward to seeing you again soon. It's always fun, John. Bye-bye. Take care.